Hello and welcome to the review show of the opening weekend of the Six Nations Championships 2014. Blood, sweat and tears. Three teams go home happy, three teams have a lot to do. So what happened? Well, let's start off with the first game. Wales versus Italy. As I predicted, this is a perfect start for Wales. They're traditionally slow starters in the Six Nations. And so it proved. They scored with a very, very quick try. But then after that point, struggled to really find any consistency, accuracy with their passing. Uh, I mean, the, the reasons for this for me are that the, uh, the, the, the Welsh regions are not playing at the same level as the test, uh, test team. Uh, I think they take a little bit of time to get into the matches, um, and so I'm hopeful that they'll improve through the season. I still question why Warren Gatland persists with Priestland. For every two things that he does well, he does one thing badly. None, none more so than he gets turned over and Italy score a breakaway try that, that gave, them, gave them enthusiasm for the rest of the game. He misses touch a few times, his kicking game can be a bit loose, he gets wrapped up. I'm just not a big fan. I, I, I would prefer Wales to go with Bigger, persist with him. He did well in the Six Nations last year and just get it done. Italy have clearly stepped up though. Uh, they are no walkover anymore. They push teams quite hard. They put in a strong performance and they will certainly target their two home games in Rome as uh, opportunities for victory uh, against Scotland and of course the last game of the season uh, against England. So uh, I expect to see uh, Italy uh, improve during the tournament but they'll certainly be targeting those two games. So moving over to Paris. France had won two games out of 13 in 2013, so were woefully uh, short of form, didn't know how to play, but yet they came up with a 16-13 lead. Now, I'd expect a team from that point to go through, you know, you've got, you've got license to thrill, throw the ball around, but no, actually, they, they closed down, didn't know what to do with the lead, and suddenly, before they knew it, they're five points down with four to go. I think they did incredibly well to then conjure a win from nowhere, but this is the French side we're talking about. England will reflect on how on earth they blew that opportunity to get a very useful win in Paris. Five points up with four to go. You cannot be losing games like that if you have aspirations for the World Cup. And all my friends that are England fans tells me that, tell me that's nailed on, along with the Six Nations. Well, the Grand Slam for this year has gone. Be interesting to see where England can dust themselves off and get back in the game. I mean, certainly for mine, it was the uh, England played well with controlled aggression, but it was the pre-planned or they certainly look pre-planned, substitutions of taking off Danny Kerr, who was having a wonderful game, and Marco Volopono. I'm not sure, or sorry, Billy Volopono. I'm not really sure why, why those substitutions took place. Both were having great games. I would have kept them on until the end, see the game out, job done. Certainly the trip next up to uh, Murrayfield is going to be a difficult one for England, as it always is. Uh, and, and both teams knowing that whoever loses that is, is pretty much struggling for the rest of the season. So two losses from the first two games would be unthinkable uh, going into the tournament. But this is the reality that England now face. France, um, they, uh, you know, they always know that they win championships after Lions tours. Uh, and they started well, so we'll see how they progress. There are still a few questions over their play, but a win is still a win. So moving on to the final game. Well, Scotland started incredibly well. They had possession. They moved the ball from left to right. They tried to probe. They probed gaps. But yet they still couldn't conjure up any points. This has been a theme for Scotland for a long time. They have possession, but don't seem to have that cutting edge that's required at test level. They're not incisive enough with the ball. And this is why they are going to finish bottom, as I predicted uh, on the Dressing Gown Diary preview show of the Six Nations for this year. Ireland ran some phases, they scored some good tries, they had a good, strong, powerful line-out uh, that also resulted in a forward push-over try for them. They looked, they looked strong and they're going to be a formidable test uh, for Wales and England in the coming weeks. But I still, we'll, we'll talk more about the, the, uh, the games in, uh, in the preview show coming up later in this week. So for now, I'll finish off with two things. The legend of the week. For me, Lloyd's legend of the weekend goes to uh, the Italian centre, Capagnaro. He was on debut, or he was a young guy, 20-year-old, scored two great tries, read Lee Halfpenny's interception for a try, and also from the turnover from Reese Priest and hacked through, may have been a forward pass, but what a great performance for an away player at the Millennium Stadium. And the final thing, Lloyd's loser of the weekend, well, Stuart Lancaster, take a bow. I am sure if you hadn't made those two 
prearranged substitutions that England would be looking at a victory in Paris. But as it is, it goes down as a loss. For now, this is the Dressing Gown Diary. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you.